Hello everyone and welcome to another Revit tutorial. In this tutorial I'll be showing you how to use the dimensioning tools from the annotate tab of Revit. So let's get started by clicking on the annotate tab. In the annotate tab you can find the dimension subsection and you'll find a list of tools over here. In this video I'll be showing you how to use each and every one of them. So let's start with the align tool over here. It is primarily used for dimensioning from one reference line to another like so. And as you can see, I clicked on reference B and reference C and Revit will automatically generate the length between these two reference lines over here. Now all I need to do is just place this dimension either up here or down here. So for this video, I'll be placing it somewhere here. Another way that you can use this align dimension tool is to dimension from one face of this slab to another face of this slab over here, like so. And I can place it anywhere down here or up here. Or so I'll place it up here for this case. Or you could also dimension this side over here. But in this case, you just need to place the dimension either to the left or to the right. So in this case, I'll place it to the right over here, like so. And the third and final way that you can use the Align Dimension tool is to dimension multiple reference lines over here. So I can left click at this reference A and continue on to reference B, C, D, and E. And you can see that I have a bunch of dimensions show up. So I can just place it right about here for now. And you might notice an EQ button here. So this EQ button will redistribute the lengths of each of these dimensions should one of these reference lines be off. So I'll demonstrate. So let's take reference line E and if I were to drag it out to 10 meters, like so, if I select this bunch of dimensions here and click on the EQ button. Revit will adjust the spacing between each reference line such that each dimension line is equal to each other, like so. But in this case, I'll just control Z twice to return things back to normal, like so, because I don't need to move any of the reference lines. So now let's move on to the linear dimension tool. So I can actually dimension from one point, let's say the middle of this pipe to the middle of this column. And I can place a dimension somewhere here. Or I could dimension from the middle of this column, which is about here, to the middle of this column over here, like so. And that's about it for the linear dimension tool. So the angular dimension tool, as the name suggests, it's mainly used to dimension angles. And I'll be using the north elevation to demonstrate the angular dimension tool. So left clicking on angular dimension, I can use it to dimension the angle between the roof beam and this horizontal reference line. So left click here and left click on this middle line of this roof beam and the dimension will be automatically generated and the angle between the roof beam and this horizontal line is 30.53 degrees. So back to the level zero plan, I'm going to show you how to use the radial dimension. So just zoom in on any circular object and I can see that this pipe here will fit our needs for now. So I can just hover over this pipe over here and you can see half of this pipe is outlined in blue. So left click and Revit will automatically determine the radius of this pipe. And in this video, this pipe has a 0 0.03 meter radius. And if I feel that this dimension is blocking the edge of the slab, I can just drag it out using this drag text button. 
I can drag it out like this or drag it up or down or move it to the right somewhere here. It's up to you on where you can place this dimension. So for this video, I'll be placing it somewhere here like so. And the diameter dimension tool works in a similar way as the radial dimension tool. So it will highlight half of this pipe over here. So I can left click it once and the diameter of the pipe will automatically show up. And in this case it is 0 0.06 meters. So I can drag it out like so for the dimensioning tag. And now it's no longer obstructing anything. So for the arc length, I need to quickly draw a curved wall so that I can demonstrate how it is used. So I'll use the start end radius arc. So I'll just quickly draw a wall like so. And I'll quickly add some windows in this wall like so. And back to the annotate tab. And I'll use the arc length dimension here. And all I need to do is just left click on this window when this dotted line shows up. And I can select the middle of this window here. And then I can select the middle of this other window here. And the arc length will show up like so. And I can also dimension from the middle of this window over here to this face over here like so. And there you go, that's how you can use the arc length dimension tool. So moving on to the spot elevation tool, I'm going to move back to the north elevation. And this spot elevation will help you to go and display the current elevation of a point. So for example, if I want to know the elevation of this point over here, I just need to left click once and I can place this elevation like so. So it's a very simple tool to use. Now for the spot coordinate, it's best to be in a plan view because the spot coordinate will show you the northing and easting values of a particular point in a project. So left click once and I can place this spot coordinate anywhere I like. So for example, if I want to know the northing and easting values of this point here, I can just left click once and I can dimension it in a similar way as the spot elevation like so. So now I know the northing and easting values here. So now back to the north elevation, I will demonstrate on how to use the spot slope. So you can either use a arrow or triangle to do your slope representation. For this case I'll be using an arrow and I'll select this part of the roof over here. And you can either place this arrow up here or down here. For this case, I'll be putting it up here. So I'll left click when this spot slope is up here and the spot slope will appear up here. And if you actually want the spot slope down there, you can actually just left click somewhere over here and left click on this face instead and there you go. Now I'll show you how to use the spot slope for a triangle. It's fairly similar. The only difference is that you have a triangle instead of a arrow like the one on the right. So you can either place it up here or down here. For this case I'll place it up here so that it will not clash with this angular dimension over here. So that's it for this Revit tutorial. I've already shown you how to use all of the dimensioning tools found in Revit. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up to support this channel. And do consider subscribing if you want to watch more Revit tutorials or Plexus 2D tutorials in the future. And as always, I hope that you are safe in these unprecedented times. Take care, keep learning, and goodbye.